Pizenhall, a serene village nestled in Suffolk, holds a captivating tale from the year 1901. At that time, the bustling Smith Sea drill works employed the majority of men in the area who diligently contributed to the village's prosperity. Meanwhile, the devout residents found solace in the primitive Methodist chapel located in nearby Sibton. Leading the chapel's choir was the esteemed William Gardiner, a man of musical prowess. Among the choir members was a young woman named Rose Harsent, merely 22 years old. Rose served as a diligent servant at Providence House in Pizenhall, dutifully employed by the esteemed Mr. and Mrs. Crisp. Interestingly, while Mrs. Crisp faithfully attended the Congregational Methodist Chapel in Pizenhall, also known as the Doctor's Chapel, Rose's responsibilities extended to ensuring its cleanliness. One fateful day, as Rose diligently cleaned the Doctor's Chapel, she unwittingly found herself witness to an intriguing event. William Gardiner, the renowned choirmaster, was observed entering the chapel by Alfonso Skinner and a certain Mr. Wright. The sight of this encounter sparked a flurry of rumors, whispers that soon traveled their way back to Gardiner's unsuspecting wife and their six children. News of this incident soon reached the ears of the church community, prompting an inquiry led by the esteemed Rev. John Guy. Determined to uncover the truth, the investigation aimed to shed light on the mysterious circumstances surrounding Gardiner's actions. However, despite their earnest efforts, no definitive evidence could be established. In the face of these rumors and the potential damage they could inflict, William Gardiner vehemently protested his innocence. He even threatened legal action against the individuals responsible for spreading the unfounded allegations. The village was left in a state of intrigue and uncertainty as the truth remained elusive in the wake of this perplexing incident. A chilling and tragic incident unfolded when Rose Harson's father made a horrifying discovery. In the kitchen, at the foot of the stairs leading to her attic room, Rose lay lifeless in a pool of her own blood. Her throat had been viciously slit, and her body bore ghastly wounds, including gashes on her shoulders and stab wounds. The remnants of her nightdress revealed signs of burning, as if an attempt had been made to set her ablaze. For to six hours had passed since her untimely demise, as determined by the autopsy. Adding to the harrowing circumstances, it was revealed during the examination that Rose, sadly, had been six months pregnant at the time of her death. In the wake of local rumors and speculation, the attention of the authorities turned towards a suspect, Gardiner. As the prime target of suspicion, he was apprehended by the police. Subsequently, he faced two trials, one in 1902 and another in 1903. However, on both occasions, the juries failed to reach a unanimous verdict, leading to Gardiner's eventual release. The allegations against Gardiner suggested that he could have been the father of the unborn child, adding a layer of complexity to the case. Within the community, Gardiner held a position of significance as a foreman at Smiths of Pizenhall, the local seed drill works. His residence, a modest semi-detached cottage where he lived with his wife and six children, stood on the main street of Pizenhall, within sight of Providence House, the very location where the tragic murder had taken place. Following the murder investigation, the authorities swiftly took action and apprehended Gardiner as a suspect. Two trials were conducted at the county hall in Ipswich Assizes to ascertain his guilt or innocence. The first trial, spanning three days from November 7, 1902, was overseen by Sir William Grantham. The second trial, commencing on January 20, 1903, was presided over by Sir John Compton Lawrence. Throughout both trials, Gardiner faced prosecution from Henry Fielding Dickens and was defended by Ernest Wilde. However, in both instances, the juries failed to reach a conclusive verdict. It was reported that during the first trial, the jury was divided with 11 members favoring a guilty verdict and one dissenting, while the second trial witnessed a similar split of 11 to 1 in favor of not guilty. It is worth noting that during that period, the dissent of a single juror prevented a majority verdict, unlike the present-day legal practice since 1974. Consequently, the prosecution issued a writ of nal prosca, a legal action distinct from the customary process of formal acquittal. 
As a result, Gardner became one of the few individuals in English history to stand trial for murder without ever receiving a verdict. Gardner's passing occurred in 1941, leaving his legal status in a peculiar state. As he had neither been declared innocent nor guilty, he never obtained a formal acquittal. Throughout his life and even following his demise, he remained under a cloud of suspicion. The intriguing case gained attention and was explored in an episode of the BBC One series Julian Fellows Investigates, A Most Mysterious Murder. Julian Fellows, delving into the details, reached the conclusion that Gardner's wife, potentially driven by jealousy, was the perpetrator of the crime. He further speculated that had her husband been convicted, the wife might have confessed to her actions.